and add in lets you run code in any database without having to import modules. Add-ins can save time and make your code more accessible. Today I will show you how to build and install an Access add-in. Hi, this is Crystal. First we will install an add-in and then I will show you what is special about it. To practice, you can download this add-in on MS Access Gurus. The link is also in the video description. When you install an add-in, you must run Access as an administrator. To do this, find the msaccess.exe file. In Access 2013, the folder is C Program Files x86 Microsoft Office Office 15. You can also make a shortcut and use that instead. If you don't run as an administrator, you will get an error, and your add-in won't install properly. If you open another database normally, even though you're running as an administrator, it will knock out the administrator privileges. In Access, open any database. The add-in I will demonstrate first documents the SQL statements in queries, forms, and reports, tests each statement, and shows which ones are bad. The reports are written to Microsoft Word. This is the forms report. Records are counted, and bad SQL statements are noted. I changed a bunch of field names in my analyzer to make it easier for others to understand. This add-in will show me which SQL statements don't run and need to be modified. The quick way to install an add-in is to go to the add-ins icon on the Database Tools ribbon tab. I already have one add-in installed, which is a command bar tool by Dale Fye. Now I want to add another one, so I choose the Add-in Manager. When the dialog pops up, choose Add New. The folder displayed is where Access will put the add-in once it is installed. Browse to the folder with the new add-in. To save time, I like to copy the path to the Windows clipboard and then paste it in the file name box. Access shows me there is one add-in file in this directory. An add-in has an ACCDA extension. If you are using a lower version of Access, this will be MDA. I pick the file and click Open. The add-in now shows in the dialog box. The information listed below comes from Add-in Database Properties for Company and Comments. I close the dialog box and go back to the manager. My add-in is successfully installed and ready for me to use. Another way to install an add-in is by going to the File menu, then Options, and Add-ins. I have two Access add-ins and one COM add-in installed. A COM add-in is not application-specific, such as VB Watchdog for easy error handling by Wayne Phillips on EverythingAccess.com. To install another Access add-in, at the bottom, drop the Manage list, choose Access add-ins, and click Go. This takes us to the Add-in Manager, which is the same dialog box we saw before. Again, click Add New, and then browse to the Add-in. Again, I paste a path to make things quick. Press Enter, choose the file, and click Open. This Add-in saves the layout of my tables, so when I close them or close Access, I can restore their positions and sizes. It is like Excel's Save Workspace feature. Then I close the dialog box showing the add-in I just installed. Now when I drop the list for add-ins, I can pick what I want to run. Let's examine an add-in file. Even though it has an ACCDA extension, 
In this case, it is just an ACCDB that has been renamed. This means that you can open it and see what is inside. Double click the add in file and Access opens it. So that Access knows about the add in, you must create a registration information table. This table is called USIS Reg Info. In order to see it, because the name starts with USIS, denoting a user system object, you will have to make sure you can see system objects by checking the box in the navigation options. The USIS Reg Info table must include these fields subkey, short text, type, long integer, val name, short text, value, short text. The subkey correlates to the registry key where the add in information is stored. Type is the type of entry. 0 is key, 1 is string, 4 is D word. Val name is the registry value name. Value is the registry value. You must specify the key, the library location, and the function name to run. Other entries are optional. Now let's talk about the data. In the subkey, H key current access profile menu add ins is replaced with the branch in the registry. For me, this is H key local machine software WOW 6432 node Microsoft Office 15.0 access menu add ins. H key current access profile makes the add in go where it needs to be in H key local machine or HKLM, depending on the version of access used when the add in is installed. To make a hotkey that is underlined when the menu item is displayed, preface the hotkey character with an ampersand. The subkey is repeated for each entry corresponding to that option. There must be a record with type equals zero. There must also be a record with type equals one, val name equals library, and value specifying the path to the add in. This is the path once the add-in is installed, not the path where you put the file to install. When you install the add-in, the file will be copied to this location. Vertical bar ACC dir backslash will be changed to the library path. For me, this is C colon users crystal app data roaming Microsoft add-ins. Finally, there must also be a record with type equals 1 and val name equals expression. The value is prefaced with an equal sign and then specifies the function to run. I like to make a form to display the options since my add-ins generally do more than one thing. Here is the code for the menu. Do command dot open form f menu main. All it does is open the menu form. The menu has command buttons that run code. As you can see, other entries can also be specified in USIS Reg Info, such as description, version, and release date. These are optional and can be used by the developer to query and display information. When the add-in is installed, information from the company and comments database properties will show. To run an add-in, you can drop the add-ins list and choose what you want. Even though the form to document SQL is not in this database, it looks like it is. Oh, another gotcha might be the database sort order. As its name implies, this affects how things in the database are sorted. I got bit by that a few months ago, but it didn't seem to matter today. I'll tell you about it anyway. Set the database sort order to general for both the add-in and the database you are using to install it. If you need to change the database sort order, it will take effect when you compact and repair the database.
In summary, change the file extension of the add-in to ACCDA or MDA. Use General for the database sort order. Set the navigation options to show system objects. Create the USIS reg info table with subkey, type, val name, and value. And if you want to display additional information about your add-in, set the company and comments database properties. To install, run Access as Administrator. And don't have any other databases open. Once the add-in is installed, opening anyway is OK. This might seem like a lot to remember, but hopefully this will save you some frustration. Once you get the hang of it, you'll be creating all kinds of cool add-ins. The nice thing about an add-in is that you don't have to import any code. What you want to run is right here. So much of what we do builds on the trials and errors of others. There's not much documentation on creating add-ins for access, so I hope you like this. I'd love to hear what you create. Post your comments. Thanks to all who have helped me on my journey to enlightenment. Kevin, Dale, Jack, Tom, Doug, and special thanks to Pat Wood. We all need help sometimes. How about you? Are you stumped? Connect to me. Let's build it together. If you want to learn, then I want to teach. Thanks for joining me. Through sharing, we will all get better.